The Buddha often compared himself to a doctor treating the diseases of the mind. And the Dharma was his medicine. This fact is directly related to his strictures for what he would say, what he would teach. One, it had to be true. Two, it had to be beneficial. And three, it had to be timely. But these things are connected because that's the way it is with medicine. You want to have genuine medicine, you want to have it make sure that it's beneficial for the particular disease that the, the patient is suffering from. And it's also the right point in the course of practice or the course of treatment for that particular medicine or that particular exercise or whatever is involved. Here's back when I was in Thailand. I went to India. Came back and I had a relapse of malaria. So I went to the hospital. And they discovered that I picked up judiasis when I was in India. So they gave me some medicine for it. It looked like good quality medicine. It actually had the, the Rush trademark on it. And after a week or two in the hospital, my malaria symptoms all went away. But I still had the symptoms of judiasis. And John Fung had a couple of nurse students, so I asked one of them what other medicine I might take. She said, well, let's first look at the medicine you've got. She had a friend who worked in the pharmaceutical department of the Thai Public Health Ministry. And so she ran a test on it. She came back and she said, that wasn't medicine. That was cornstarch. This is a big problem in Thailand. They're really good at making what looks like genuine pills from genuine pharmaceutical companies. But it was just cornstarch. It wasn't even true medicine. So in the same way, when you're practicing the Dharma, when you're talking about the Dharma to other people, first you want to make sure what you've got is true Dharma. Because there's a lot out there that's fake Dharma. It looks just like the real thing. They dress it up really nicely. But it can't really cure any diseases. So make sure you've got your sources right. And you've got reliable sources. And then the next question is, is this particular Dharma lesson in line with what the, that particular person needs, given their condition? Another story from Thailand. Toward the end of my stay, I had bronchitis. And there was a herbal medicine that was a big hit at that point. It's called Fa Talai Joan, which literally means the, the sky destroys thieves. It's a great name for a medicine. It was very cooling. Well, it turned out it was precisely the medicine I should not have taken, given my condition, because it just made it worse. So when you're looking at yourself in your own practice, or you're talking to other people about the Dharma, you want to make sure that what you're saying is useful for what they've actually got, in terms of the disease of the mind that they've got. For example, when people are starting out with concentration practice, you don't tell them, well, concentration is not self. And it's going to be beyond your control. Because the problem at that point, of course, is that it really is beyond their control. That's not the medicine they need. And also, it's not timely. When you talk about not-self, it comes at another stage in the practice. And John Fuang was very strict about this point in discussing the Dharma. There was a minor prince who liked to go around Thailand asking the different Ajans really high-level Dharma questions to kind of figure out what level of attainment they had. He came to see John Fung one time and asked a very high-level question. And John Fung's first question in response was, is your mind in anywhere near there in that particular problem? And the prince said, no. And John Fung said, in that case, I don't want to talk about it, because at the moment it's, just, it's going to be nothing but concepts. He wanted to wait until you you needed that particular medicine, that particular Dharma medicine, for what your condition was. And then he would talk about it. Because he realized that Dharma is medicine. It's not just a topic to discuss in your spare time. You look at the Buddha when he taught. 
He didn't set any medical treatises. He just treated individual people with their individual problems. He made some general comments to the monks at large about the Dharma. But it was a sign of the wisdom of the Buddha and probably Ananda, whoever was responsible for the fact that we have all these discourses where they describe who came to the Buddha with what particular problem. Unfortunately, Pali is not a living language anymore, so there's a lot probably in the way the questions are asked or the type of Pali that's used that would tell us a lot about the person who's being treated. But still we can get some good ideas. People come with certain questions and this is how the Buddha responded to those questions. In fact, he made the ability to respond properly to questions one of the signs of a wise person. In other words, some questions require categorical answers, yes, no, across the board. Others require analytical answers, in which case you have to reanalyze the question, rephrase the question, and then give an answer. Some require cross-questioning. In other words, you have to ask questions of the person asking the questions to make sure they're ready to understand what you're about to say. And then there are some questions that just should be put aside. They're not worth talking about. Now, if the Buddha had just written a treatise on the Dharma, say like the Vasudhimaga, we never would have gotten to see those principles in action. But it's because we have the discourses. We see a wide range of people from that time in India coming to see the Buddha with different problems. And you get a sense. Medicine as case studies. And so each medicine has its context. So it's good to think about that, both as you practice, as you're reading the different case studies to figure out, does this particular case apply to me? And when you're talking about the Dharma with others. The ideal is that you say something that's effective, true, beneficial, and timely. And that way the Dharma can show its, its true worth as medicine. Otherwise, if you've just got a big shelf of medicines and you open up a bottle and you taste it yourself and then you share it with somebody else without any real sense of what disease it's for, and sometimes you get sick. Because some medicines can make you sick if they're not right for your illness. And John Mahabhava says that John Mun, when he was giving his general Dharma talks, tended to skip over some really important things. At first he found it frustrating. Why didn't it John Mun? go into that particular problem. Well, he would go into that particular problem if you had that problem and you came to him one-on-one. -on -one. But for general consumption, he wanted to keep quiet about it, because otherwise people would have preconceived notions when they got to that point, and the preconceived notions would get in the way. So think about the Ajans. They were very sensitive to time and place, what was appropriate. And of course they tested the truth of the Dharma not only in looking for reliable sources, but also testing it in their own practice, so they knew what they were talking about. So when you make sure that your discussion of the Dharma is true and beneficial and timely. That's when you get the most out of it.